Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching me play Vampire. Um, last episode we bought a few things from uh, the merchant who is just out here. He's not a particularly good merchant. I call him a merchant because he sold me stuff, but he's kind of just a kid who's selling random junk that he's found. Um, but we found this music box, a small music, uh, small wooden music box containing a folded letter. So if we look at that, we can have a look at the actual letter. My dear Jack, I write this letter as... A Long as I have the strength and the will, not that I have something to hide or to fear, except perhaps to forget what I want to tell you. I always knew you would become someone important, someone good and nice. I knew it since you were a child, when you preferred to read books rather than going to play outside. I knew it when you helped me carry groceries before you went to school and cleaned the house after you came back. I'm proud of you, my son, not only because I am your mother, but also because you deal so well with everything around you. I'm sorry I have recently become such a burden to you. Never forget I love you. I hope you never forget you love me, Enid. Enid feels guilty about her son, Jack. Hmm. I may want to actually just talk to Enid there. Um, there was something else I got from him. It was like a note, but... I can't remember what the hell it was. Um, I'm thinking maybe it was one of these things. I think this was it here. Vampire and the guard will never have a common interest. Never. Not as long as I live. Not after I die and pass the torch to another leader. I know some of us have witnessed a strange and huge vampire hunting down scars just like we do. He is well dressed and seems to speak eloquently. But don't be fooled. If this unknown leech and his friends seem to hate scars as much as we do, some others offer them safe haven in exchange for obedience. Scouts in the north have reported the strange ceremonies occur in the secluded forest of Scotland. Ceremonies of blood and human sacrifice to old pagan gods. They may be adversaries to the London vampires, but none of these leech factions could be our allies. All vampires must be destroyed, and no alliance will be made between them and us. From the Adversary by Kendall Stone, founder of the God of Prewin. I don't know why I made him more Australian than I am, but I did. He came from Queensland, apparently. Um... <laughs> I was originally going to go London, and it kind of just turned into that kind of Aussie twang, and I just went with it. Um, but, <laughs> interesting. So there's some factions there of vampires. Probably that vampire that ran into me, actually, and threatened me. Um, that's been going around killing vampires, and they're saying we shouldn't trust them, even though they're... Are you certain you're not lost, sir? Good evening, Miss Gillingham. May I come in? Of course, uh, of course. Um, they're essentially saying even though they're killing vampires, they're not our allies just because they're killing our enemies. Oh, Dr. Tippetts, what brings you back here? We haven't talked in quite some time. We talked about three minutes ago. Tell me, Enid, why do you feel guilty about your son? I know I'm a burden to my Jack. I know my mind and my thoughts are drifting away. I'm so sorry. I can't help it. This is not your doing, Miss Gillingham. You do not have to apologize for your condition. Of course I don't, Doctor. I've done nothing wrong, I swear it. What exactly are we talking about here? Interesting. Goodbye, Miss Gillian. That wasn't anything particular. It was just a note that she'd forgotten she'd written, essentially. Um, so there's a couple of things I want to do. One, I need to find my way into the sewers if I can. And secondly, I need to put up some posters. Um... Uh, nope. F. Uh, just out here, apparently. So that's actually... <laughs> kind of good. Also, second shortcut I can unlock. That's actually a really useful shortcut. Because <laughs> that takes me directly to the northern docks. Um, so I'm glad I unlocked that. Um, where does it want me to put these posters? 
Origins of the Skulls. Interesting. It is, uh, who wrote this? Usher Talltree, okay. It has been established for some time now that Skull is the vernacular name of a different species of lesser blood drinkers. A Skull often seems to be the victim of a vampire attack who miraculously survived death and came back as a crooked version of its maker. According to many observations made by our order throughout the centuries, Skulls are genuinely despised and killed by vampires, who consider them lesser and despicable creatures. The name itself means slave. They also have been called Sak Alibwa, Arabic, or Sakaliba, Arabic, uh, Skalvus, Latin, and Skalvioni, Greek. This shows how old these creatures are, and how their makers perceive them. This may be why Skulls often tend to form small and discrete communities that stick together. It is also interesting to note that Skulls seem to call themselves this way, as if they have accepted for a long time their status as inferior servants among vampires. It is more difficult for a Skull to hide its monstrous nature. Pale skin, terrible teeth, strange emaciation? Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, lack of blood, I guess. Dilated and staring pupils. Many have lost all hair and they show wounds and scars, which stay open without without never completely without ever completely healing they also seem capable of surviving by eating the flesh of the dead while vampires need blood from the living they may be the real origins of the mythical figure of the ghoul the folklore creature who lurk in the cemeteries and feed from the dead a skull is a miserable creature most of the time they fear to be seen by both humans and vampires in some regions older skulls have been witnessed nearby vampires as servants or slaves obtaining protection by sacrificing their freedom. Most of the scales are descended from Ekons and show humanoid silhouettes. Uh, much more uncommon that some present a more canine aspect and behave like wolves. They are sometimes called Volpes in ancient texts. Volpes, interesting. That would imply fox rather than wolf, but okay. At least a third type exists, in the shape of a bird or bat. They are called Corvus. That would be crow, I suppose. William Marshall himself referred these three times to some bat-shaped creature he called Vampire in his memoirs. Other types may exist, unknown or unidentified for now. From Drinking at the Fountain of Knowledge by Usher Talltree, Primate of St. Tall. Interesting. There's actually some fairly good knowledge about scales there. Oh, look. Posters. Anti-vampire poster. <laughs> Danger is closer than you think. They are already here. Do not let them take your kingdom. See a vampire? Seek for help. Ichabod Throgmorton, expert vampire hunter. Fair enough. Um, stick five posters in the streets at the East End docks, or burn all the posters. Interesting. Where do I burn the posters? I mean, I'll put the posters up. Why the hell not? I guess this is the way to burn them, right? Oop. Let me get this. Thank you. Uh, this is the way around to the western docks. Sure. I mean, I'll put these posters up. I don't really care. I have no stamina. Hmm. Interesting. I think the, the holy symbol drained my blood, which is interesting. Informing London's inhabitants of the presence of vampires. What does that make me? A double or a triple agent? He's interesting. I'm mainly doing this because I want to piss off that other vampire who threatened to kill me. 
it's the main reason I'm doing this, by the way. Uh, so there should be one here. Also, this is taking me in the direction that I need to go to explore, where I haven't explored. It's another reason why I'm doing this. I want to eat this guy, if I can. Attack the guy I want you to attack, please. Thank you. I want to eat them. I like the fact that these guys are... These guys are Irish. They make the, um... The priests Irish. Done. Mr. Throgmorton should be happy. Indeed. Okay. Um... Oh, apparently he's in this area. Good to know. Over there! There's one of them first. Over there! Ah. I'm just gonna murder everyone in the area. Seems like the easier way to do this, in all honesty. Murder everyone, and then I can explore freely. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, I've explored all of this, I think. Yeah, I explored all up here, then I jumped down, right? Yeah, I killed some stuff underneath. Nothing particularly interesting over here, it seems like. Oh, Guard of Prewin, no. Uh, 27th of October, Guard of Prewin Command Post to Docs Project. Object, Vampire Hunter, Fraud, Avoid. <laughs> Some of the scouts recently spotted the presence of a certain Ichabod Throgmorton near the East End Docks. You'll probably see him patrolling the place at night, claiming that he's a specialist of vampire extermination. The man is a fraud, not even a real con man, for he does not charge anybody for the work, but he clearly has no clue what he's doing, uh, what he's talking about. If he ever approaches you for some joined hunt or collaboration, refuse and let him go. In a leech fight, the man is nothing more than bait. Interesting. Good to know. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Also, sorry if you're hearing some sound. I'm knocking my microphone occasionally by accident. Just because of the, posi the position it's currently in where I'm recording. Um... Interesting, so I can go up here and have a look up here. Also, I think, aside from finding the sewers, which I have yet to do... woman here who I've yet to talk to it's locked alrighty then so I need to find Ichabod he's apparently in this area somewhere apparently not here And he's not that way. I assume he's somewhere near where these things were? But I don't know where. So this here should take me back to her. Okay. 
I'm getting better at navigating my way around here. I want to find my way into the sewers if I can. I just don't know where I would go to find said sewers. Because if we go here, we've got this, um, sorry, that there. He's like out here, but like being out here seems kind of meaningless unless I know how to get into the sewer. I guess I can check down in this area because I haven't yet in case there's a door to get down into the sewer. I think there was. I think this door here would lead me in I there. I cannot enter. Hmm. So that's one way into the sewer. I guess I could check up here for another way. There must be, like, a way into the sewer. Maybe I get it from the main quest, is my thinking. We're sitting at 15 minutes. Hmm. I think we're just going to continue main quest. And then see if that leads me to the sewer. And if it doesn't, then I'm just going to have to find my way into the sewer before... Before we sleep, because I think he's like one of the ones that's like in trouble and we need to go save him, otherwise he dies. Um, but let's talk to this woman here at the front of this place. For now, I don't know where she's gone. There you are. Hello. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. May I have your attention for a minute? Good evening, sir. My name is Giselle Paxton, but I don't have time for men like you. Have we met before? No. But I just need to look at your fancy clothes to know that you must be desperate to visit the docks at night. That's quite judgmental of you. Sir, I've led enough strikes when I had a job to identify you as an enemy of the working class. Fair enough. You speak of strikes and class enemy. Am I right to assume you're involved in trade union activism? You bet I am. Well, I was. Nowadays, I'm just another worker blacklisted by the big companies. Excuse me a minute. Ugh, sorry if you could hear that. I was taking my jumper off. I'm sitting in a room that I had a heater on. And it got to the point where it was just too hot. So I've turned the heater off and I've taken my jumper off. Which means, no doubt, I'll get too cold in a minute. But, you know. <laughs> you lost your job because of your beliefs. Those bastards really hate a worker who refuses slave wages and unsafe conditions, especially when it's a woman. Isn't the whole point of trade unions to help workers in need? Why don't they support you? A few nights back, I lost the money my companions had asked me to hide. With me and my sister being penniless, they thought I stole it. What really happened? I drank too much that night. Strange men saw me count the money in that bar. Some sort of militia in uniform. I'm sure they robbed me. Intriguing. Prewin, maybe? Prewin are the only militia that I know about. Like, there's the gangs, but I wouldn't refer to them as a militia, per se. May I ask what you do for a living? I'm killing myself scraping for a living. And you? Have you ever had to struggle in your entire life? I was in the Great War, bitch. As I told you, I'm a doctor. You have to work a lot to earn that title. Oh, a doctor. Hmm, born with money in a nice house, were we? Was Daddy a banker or a doctor himself? Why such hatred? Are you judging me by my clothes and my job? Of course I am. Fuck, you're so blind. You don't even see your privilege. Lazy people like you disgust me. Yeah, sounds about right. What can you tell me about this vicinity? Tell you what, just spend a few weeks here and then ask me that question again. If you're still alive, I mean. If you have something to say, say it. I'm getting tired of all this. Oh. You want information instead? Well, here's some for you. Giselle Paxton does not like you at all, Doctor. You don't know me, Miss Paxton, and yet you see me as an enemy. Oh, 
Your manners, your clothes, your words tell me everything about you, sir. I know your kind. And you don't belong here. You're right. I have never suffered from poverty. But that doesn't mean I don't fight it and its consequences. I really doubt you ever had to fight for anything in your life, Dr. Reed. About the fucking war, cunt. I really hate her. <laughs> I know I'm people like her Sean too. Hampton. Can you help me? What is it you want? Does he owe you money? Has he displeased your royal highness? I'm no snitch, Mr. Fancy Pants. Oh, shut up, you can't. Jesus. Well, I'll leave <laughs> you for now. Goodbye, Miss Baxter. What a cunt. I'm gonna keep the money if I find it off her. Um Where is it? Here. Yeah. Down here. I can go do this right now. It shouldn't take me long. Like, I know people like that in real life, too, who believe, like, they're poor and they've always been poor, usually because they're shit with money, and then they think that anybody who's rich somehow got rich off, like, blind luck, and, like, they never, they never had to work for anything in their life, and it's like... It's such... Utter horse shit. Like, clearly, people who are rich are usually rich in 9 out of 10 cases. Probably even higher than that. Like, 95% of the time, rich people are rich because- Where the fuck am I going? <laughs> Give me a second. Um, rich people are rich because they work a hell of a lot harder than most other people. I mean, there is- There is some differential there when you get into, like, super rich, but, like, for the most part, rich people are rich because they work harder than poor people. And they're better at storing their money. And as I said, there is some differential there because once you are rich, it's easier to keep wealth. But this could be the public house Giselle Paxton mentioned. I should investigate further. Stolen money. Everyone has some unethical ways of financing their war. I'm gonna give her money back. I said I wasn't going to, but like, I don't need it. Plus, just keeping her money would kind of prove her point about me, I suppose. And I don't want to give her the satisfaction I do. Hey, Dove Cunt, got your money. You again? What do you want? I've identified the men who stole from you. You were right. They were members of some self-proclaimed militia. I knew it! Did you find the money, too? Yes. Here it is. They thought they could finance their activities with it. I never thought a man like you would be kind enough to... I misjudged you. Badly. Um... I'm... Well... Thank you, sir. Will you give the money back to your comrades, then? Fuck those bastards who fired me. I'll give the money to Miss Gillingham. Her son Jack was a friend of mine. He was killed recently. Interesting. Just friends with Jack. I know you were friends with Miss Gillingham's son, Jack. Tell me about his death. Jack's murder has been a shock to the neighborhood. A sign that the situation is now out of control. Why is that? There has always been tension between the wet boot boys and members of the trade union. Hmm. But a murder? 
Vanessa first. Interesting. Who killed him? No one will ever know. One thing is certain. While Jack was alive, I had one less reason to drink. Why does that upset you so much? I wish I had found the time and words to tell him how important he was to me before it was too late. Another failure for Giselle Paxton. Hmm. It's kind of sad. Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. Also, I am glad I gave her the money back, because she did apologize. I honestly wasn't expecting her to apologize, and the fact she did says a lot about her character. Um, so there's a guy in the sewers that I can't find, I need to give that to Tom when I get back, and I need to report to Ichabod Thogmorton. But I don't know where he is. Like, it says he's, like, here somewhere. I'm gonna run around and search for him. Um, I'll actually cut, and I'll be back when I find him. Alright. So I found him. He's outside. He's where he was. It's just like, it tells me he's like over here and he's not. I guess he's got a different spawn point and because I haven't slept since I've done that quest, he's still here. Good evening, Mr. Throckmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? I put up your public service announcement. <laughs> Consider the common folk warned about the vampiric presence. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Vampiric, surely. You may not realize it, but you saved a great many lives today. Do you really think they could be useful? See the sad saint of the East End? How a single man can help so many people? I consider myself the discreet protector of these men and women. Hmm. Interesting. You've never faced, let alone killed, a vampire, Ichabod. You're a fraud. No, I'm not. I may embellish the truth concerning my achievements, but I'm totally dedicated to my quest. You have courage, Mr. Throckmorton. Perhaps that is all one requires to face the demons. Thank you, Dr. Reed. You'll see. One day I'll find and kill one of these monstrosities with my own two hands. Interesting. Tell me, Ichabod, why do you consider yourself the protector of Sean Hampton's shelter? He is a truly inspiring example. Dedicated, pious, his shelter is open to all, whoever they are. Most admirable. Goodbye. And good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. I think I may have just got him killed. <laughs> Accidentally. Hey Tom, I got your alcohol. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? You lied to me, Tom. Your warehouse wasn't empty. It was inhabited with armed vigilantes. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed, but I thought those Prewin guards would be willing to let someone like you pass without trouble. That was devious of you, Tom. Next time you can bloody well go yourself. I apologize, Doctor, but it's just that I prefer to avoid the law, its enforcers, and all manner of thugs in uniform. Fair. Here is your booze. I hope it will appease your customers. Just try not to kill anyone with this poison of yours. <laughs> Believe me, Doctor, most of my customers are less agreeable when sober. <laughs> Here we go. Tell me about your arrest for attempted murder, Tom. I tried to kill someone. I got arrested. I paid my debt and I have nothing to hide. Interesting. So you mean your customers know about your sordid past? Yeah, why do you think this is the last pub open? I have nothing to hide and I don't judge. That's a relief for many round here. Do you think prison changed you? Made you a better man? Oh, I don't know about that. All I brought back is bad memories, scars, <laughs> and an ugly tattoo of a blue turtle. But do you feel cleansed of your sins? All I know is that I'm at peace. 
I did what I did, but I wouldn't do it again. Does that make me a better man? I don't know. The fact that you asked that question, I think, makes you a better man. You attempted murder. Give me some details. I was given an order. An order to kill. Uh, I was an obedient gang member at the time. A proud, wet boot boy. Makes sense. Because he was a kid, Why presumably. Why did you join the gang? Because I finally felt useful. Do you have any idea what it means to feel respected when the rest of the world shits on you? So you were ordered to kill someone. What happened then? I don't know if you can possibly understand, but... I couldn't kill him. I just stood there pointing my gun. Someone saw me. I gave up. Why couldn't you shoot? My target was eating in that fancy restaurant with mirrors and music. He was eating, drinking, laughing. He was having such a good time. I hated him for his bottomless appetite and easy life of easy pickings. And then something happened. You refused to kill him because you wanted to feel some of that happiness yourself. You empathized with him. Exactly. The man was a bloody landlord who rented overpriced flats. A selfish bastard. But he made me smile. And I was no different from him. Mm. He's a damn good man. Why not leave town and start a new life after you got out of jail? I grew up in the East End. This is where my roots are. This is where I want to help others and die eventually. Hmm. Do you think the docks will always be a hive of scum and villainy? As long as poverty and fear run the show, I don't see how it would change. Misery loves company, as they say. Indeed. Don't you feel threatened? Staying in such a violent and criminal neighborhood. I've made peace with my violent past, Dr. Reed. I may not be a pacifist, but I'm not angry anymore. Makes a difference. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Cool. Times like these, a good drink's just as likely to cause a problem as to solve one. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so that's going to be it for this episode. I thought I was going to get to the main storyline. I didn't. Um, what you going to do? This I can't do yet. Um, it's just this I have to do. Rodney Gardner. Or Rodney Grader? Hmm. Um, I'm actually Google to see whether I can do this before I go into the, the main house. Because if I can, I want to. Um, but it looks like I need a key, so I may not be able to do it. We'll see, though. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time.